Video editing already takes long enough, so let's speed things up with some of my favorite keyboard shortcuts and save you some time. Now, I'm going to be showing you these shortcuts in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2015, but if you're using another video editing app like Final Cut Pro 10, you can go in and change your keyboard shortcuts in those apps too. Also, I've created custom keyboard shortcuts that I've pulled from other video editors I've learned from in person and online. So these aren't the default shortcuts built into Premiere. Well, some of them are, but not all of them. So if you're just getting started, practice learning the built-in shortcuts first by hovering over buttons before clicking them or seeing the command to the right of the action in the drop-down menu. Okay, first ones first. If you're going to change your keyboard shortcuts or just want to learn a bunch of them, you can pull up the keyboard shortcut list by going to Command Option K. This will pull up uh, your keyboard layout preset if you're on default or maybe an older version or you're coming over from Final Cut Pro 7. I have a custom one saved and I usually do it by date so I know which one's newer. But you can go in and you can search any of these and say Zoom, uh, what's the button for Zoom? So I have that to Z and Shift Z and I'll be showing all of my shortcuts as I go through this video, but this is an important thing to know how to do. So that's Command, Option, K. Next up, I have the timeline. So the timeline is this section down here, and to zoom to show the entire sequence, let's say I'm zoomed in really, really far like this, I use the button that's right above the return key. It's, I believe, a forward slash, maybe a backward slash, I always get the two confused. But clicking that changes between the whole sequence and the part you're zoomed in on. So if you need to navigate to somewhere quickly, I'll just zoom out and then go to the place. And then you can click that button again, and it'll take you at the same zoom in amount as it was before. So I have my zoom instead of plus and minus, I have them set to Z and shift Z. So Z will zoom in, shift Z will zoom out. And as you go through these keyboard shortcuts, I'm going to tell you, you're going to see that most of them are laid out on the left side of the keyboard just like you're playing a first person shooter or a computer game like World of Warcraft where you're moving around with WSAD and I have them mapped to the left side of the keyboard. So if my hand's on the right side of the keyboard doing some of the keyboard shortcuts I'll show you later or it's on the mouse, my hand is in the place it needs to be to do most things. So in this example, zoom in with Z, zoom out with Shift Z. Next up, I have reverse play, pause, and play. And those are on the J key. So J will actually play it backwards. K will pause, L will play it forward. And if you hit these buttons multiple times, it'll start to speed up. And this is called shuttling left or shuttling right. So shuttling back, if I hit J three times, one, two, three, you can see it's fa uh, fast rewinding. And if I hit L forward three times, one, two, three, you can see it's playing back really quickly. And then I hit K and I'll be right back where I was. An advanced way to do this is, let's say you're, going back slowly so you hit j and it's slowly playing back at 1x about hit j again but you want to slow it down and play back at 1x you hit l again there so you can slow down how fast it's going using j k and l pause it play it and that's how i navigate around when i'm just playing back so for the next shortcut let's say you want to actually see some of the thumbnails for the video tracks if you use command plus or minus so command equals actually that'll make it so i can have the video tracks each be taller I can start to see thumbnails, so without having to scrub through, I can see what I'm looking at. And then to actually minimize those, you just use Command minus, and it'll minimize them back down. So Command equals and Command minus. Okay, so you know how to pull up the keyboard shortcuts, you know how to navigate the timeline down here, but next, let's try to do some assembly of maybe the first draft of what you're gonna put together. So I'm gonna pull up a clip here, and you can see that there's an in point and an out point selected. I did that by pressing I. So if I wanna start here, I press I and you can see the in point moved. Let's say I wanna to go to there, select the out point, and now that clip is selected. If I want to actually bring that into a sequence, I can go ahead and scroll to the right here. I can drag it down and it'll bring both of those together. If you wanna do just video, you can drag there, audio, drag there, but in and out points. Those are huge to be able to select what you want to use and bringing in just those points. Sorry, Pat, I didn't realize this was when you were sleeping. So <laughs> next, if you need to mark a clip, like let's say I really wanna get rid of this clip, I would hit M twice and I could pull up a marker and just say, remove this clip. And then you can change the duration of it to be a little bit longer so I can actually see what it says, maybe make it blue so I'll notice it. And you can see right there, remove this clip marker. So M once to add a marker. So if I just add a marker right here, 
So you can see the little green one right there. But if you hit it again right away, you can edit it, change the title, change the duration, change the color, everything. So let's say I selected uh, another in and out point. So here to here, and I wanted to bring that down and I didn't wanna have to drag it down like this or anything. So what you can do is if you hit comma, it will insert it. And you see it didn't insert it onto video track one and audio track one, it actually inserted into video track two and uh, audio track two. And that's because that's where I had it selected and targeted to bring it down. So insert, but let's say I bring it in over here and I hit period. Period actually overwrites the section. So if I hit period, you can see wherever the cursor is, it's gonna overwrite what's there. Versus insert, if I hit comma, it puts it right in the middle and it shifted everything to the right. So you have to think about when you're editing, do I want to insert this or do I want to overwrite what I'm actually bringing in? Okay, next we have some of the tools that you're going to be using while editing and messing around with some of your clips here. So you can see, you know, the clips that I just played in, they're just the same thing over and over again. But here are the main tools that you can use. The first one that I use a lot is the rolling edit and that's to hit N. And what you can do is you can select any edit and you can pull to the side and you can see the beginning and end frames of the two clips to the left or right in the preview screen. So I use this a lot to get it fine tuned exactly what I want. You can also use this on audio at any time as well. Next, I use the slip tool, which is Y. And this lets you within where it's already set in the timeline, you can slide the original clip back and forth. So you can see it's moving where it begins and ends. And you can see it's really bright there at the beginning. I don't really want that part of the clip. So let me slide it until it exposes properly there. And now if I play it, now it doesn't have that part where it's overexposed. You can see this number here just means that the audio is off sync a little bit. All right, next is the razor tool. I have that mapped to C. This lets you cut anywhere you want. And if you hold shift with this on how I have it set up, it'll cut all tracks. So you can see it's cutting wherever I click. This is gonna be the worst video ever, <laughs> but you can see that that's how you can cut tracks. And then if you hit the V tool, you can select them. And so you can select some things, hit delete to get rid of them. You can hit shift delete on what I have to ripple delete and it'll bring everything back to that point. So there's not a drop frame and that's the main grouping of tools that I use, the rolling edit, the slip, the razor, and selection. All right, let's say you got your first cut now. Let's navigate this timeline a little bit more. We already talked about zooming in and out and making the tracks bigger or smaller, but let's say you wanna move around here and you don't wanna to have to click through each of the uh, clips to see what is what. Even if you have the thumbnails there, it's still a pain to have to like click through them all. Some of them you can't see if it's not a long enough duration. And so what I have set to the A and S keys are go to previous edit point for A. So you can see if I start at this end and I hit A, it keeps going to the previous edit. You can see when it gets here though, it's gonna actually jump to this. So both of these are selected and it will go between them both. Now, if you use the next point, that's S on my uh, keyboard shortcut setup, you can go A, S, and you can go back and forth, S, A, all the way through your clips, and then you can navigate to them individually, and you don't have to use your mouse to do so. If you go ahead and do Shift, A, and S, I have it set for any track. So if I have this track up here, this track down here, if I'm just using A and S, now it'll jump through everything with Shift. All right, so I have two more for when you're in the timeline and you're doing some editing. If you want to actually select the clip that the play frame is on, so you can see I have this play frame right here, but this clip is selected, I have it set to D. So then I can go ahead and select anything that's on that playhead in the timeline. Now, if I want to actually do something about that clip, so let's say I have this clip here and I want it to open over here. Let me open something else so you can see. So if I have this clip here and maybe I move the playhead here, I wanna select that clip with D and then I hit F and it will go and find this clip in the browser. It'll pull up here so you can then decide you maybe you want some different in and out points. You can adjust it a little bit, bring it back down, replace clip, whatever you wanna do. F will match frame and it'll pull it up on any video that you have 
So you can see right there, it's matching. It'll pull it up in the browser. It's just super helpful to go and find that clip instead of having to scroll through the browser and figure out where it is. Okay, now let's start from scratch again and actually do a little edit of something. So let me just pull six clips and I'll just bring them all in here. Now let's say you wanna make a quick edit of these six clips. Right now they take about a minute and 15 to get through all of them. I really don't want all of those clips. So let's go ahead and start with this first one here. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see. And let's say I want to cut off this beginning section where it shakes a little bit, and then once it gets steady, I want it to start right there. But then I also want this part deleted. So instead of going cut, cut, selecting it, delete, selecting everything, dragging it back, instead of doing all those steps, what you can do is you can use the ripple trim previous edit to play HUD. So go ahead right here and hit Q, and it did all those steps. It selected the thing behind it, cut it, delete it, ripple deleted everything back to that point so then I can keep going. So now let me find how long I want it on the screen. And then you can see it dips a little bit there when I uh, went to go press the record button to make it stop. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit W and it'll do the same thing from the other direction. It'll cut, it'll select the clip in front, it'll delete that and it'll ripple delete everything else back to that selection. So with two key presses, I've gone ahead and shortened this clip. Let's do the same thing with this one in the same kind of way. So let me go ahead and find a good spot. So it's not moving much here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Q and it'll ripple delete and bring back to the previous edit. And then when it, oh, it jumped a little bit there, so let me hit W. Now that clip's nice and short. And you can see how you can quickly take these long B-roll shots that you've done and put together a faster paced story. And you can do it really quick without having to do a bunch of mouse presses. So let's say I wanna cut right there and then have them walk by and right when she goes off screen, I can hit W and it'll do a cut right there. And so you can, you can quickly piece together a little bit of story using B-roll that way, using Q and W to do the ripple trim to the previous edit to the playhead or the next edit to the playhead. Playhead, sorry. So if you go ahead and do that with shift, the way I have my stuff set up, you'll actually extend the previous edit to that point. So you can see I'm on the third little clip here, but if I hit shift Q, it'll bring this clip to that point and start this clip at where the playhead is. Let me do that again. Shift Q, and it extends that clip to the playhead. Now, if I click on do, let's use this clip here to show the reverse, and this would be to bring this clip so that it actually starts here, but it doesn't mess up any of the timing down to the right. And I can hit shift W, it'll bring that clip back, and you can see if I redo and undo and redo, this isn't shifting at all. So shift W would do that, whereas W would actually delete and bring everything back. So you just kind of have to play around with those, and I have them set to Q, shift Q, W, shift W for ripple, trim, previous edit to playhead, and extend the previous and next playheads. Next up, we have some fine tuning, and this is really just getting to the exact frame that you want to get to. So I have these set instead of to the, the arrow keys, I have these set to E and R because I'm right next to Q and W to do these ripple trims and edits and stuff. So if I use E and R, E takes me back a frame, might be a little bit easier on one of these others. R takes me forward, E takes me back, R takes me forward, and those are each one frame. Then I have 10 frames set to shift E. So shift E, I go back 10 frames, shift R, I go forward 10 frames. And this just allows me to get to the exact point that I want. So let's say I want to get to the point where you can see this person coming around her elbow right there. And then I can hit W and it'll end the clip right at that point. So E, R, shift E, shift R. Okay, home stretch. Here are the last four. And these will just help you change your view and help you actually navigate around the interface of Premiere or whatever you're using a little better. So for Premiere, you can use the tilde key to make whatever your mouse is hovering over full screen. So right now I'm on the timeline. If I hit it, it'll go full screen and I can actually see what I'm doing. Now, if I want to look for some clips, I might go over to the, the media browser and look in the bin and hit tilde. It'll bring up all the clips at full screen that I can scroll through and <laughs> wait for all the thumbnails to load. You can do the same thing with any of these other frames. Wherever your mouse is, it'll make that full screen by hitting the tilde. Next, if you want to toggle full screen on something, specifically 
what I use this for is on the video. So if I want my video to be full screen, I'll hit control tilde. And then you can see the video went completely full screen. I don't see any uh, windows. I don't see any navigation or menus or anything like that. And that helps me focus on it. Now, if I just hit tilde, I get all those things. I get the, I get the play buttons. I get the markers. I get the menu at the top. Shift tilde will go completely full screen. And when I play back, I can actually see only the video. All right, so last couple are when you have multicam. So if you have multicam selected, which um, I'm gonna have to make a fake one here, select these two, multicam, uh, nest, make a nest sequence, and then turn on multicam, enable. Now, these aren't actually synced together, but if they were, I would hit shift zero, and this brings up my little multicam uh, window here. So I can actually see which angle it is that I've selected, and I can click the other angle to change that clip entirely. So you can actually see different angles, and while you're playing back, you can have it record, so you can play back and select angles, and then stop, and it'll be changing each of those angles. So if you have a multicam interview and you have the audio synced with three different cameras, this is very helpful to let you go through those different space, uh, different uh, multicams. Lastly, we have toggling workspaces. In uh, Premiere Pro CC 2015, they actually made some better workspaces. I really like this color workspace that helps you do some color correction. If you actually select a clip and let me close multicam here, you can actually do a bunch of uh, changes. There's also a nice editing one that has a source here and you can select through the other ones by going to window and workspace. And I have a, a dual monitor one that I use. There's a, a good one for audio. So you can actually go ahead and navigate through all of these by selecting option, shift, and then the numbers. So option, shift, one, option, shift, two, option, shift, three, option, shift, four, and it'll go through the different workspaces. So you can set up custom workspaces and put them in whatever order you want and learn the shortcuts to go quickly to the color workspace, make some changes to the exposure and contrast and highlights, and then go back into the editing workspace and continue working. So that's my last keyboard shortcut. Those are the main ones that I use almost every time I edit using uh, Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Don't try to implement all of these at once. Uh, hopefully this is a video that you refer back to and try to pick up one or two, maybe every week and eventually you'll get through it in six months or so. But these are just a handful to start using. And once those become a habit, then you can add in some more. The less you use your mouse while editing, the faster you'll actually be. So thanks for watching this episode of DIY Video Guy TV. Until next time, remember, if you're going to do it, might as well do it on video.